Our next example is going to be 2014 Social Security taxes. Now the reason I'm doing examples using taxes is not because we're studying taxes in this class. We're not. It just happens to be an interesting field of economics from which to take real-world examples to give you practice on figuring out the average and marginal of functions. So the, the current Social Security tax has the following structure. It's 7.65% of income, which I've indicated on the top graph by 0 0.765, up to a certain level. And then you don't pay any tax on the additional income you get beyond that level. So I'll mark the level. The level changes from year to year. In 2014, it's $117,000. So in other words, someone er who earns a million dollars a year pays exactly the same amount in Social Security taxes as somebody who earns $117,000 a year. That's what the horizontal line on the top graph means. So let's do, let's do the marginal tax rate first. That's, uh, that's pretty easy. The marginal tax rate from 0 to 117 is the slope of this line, and of course it's a straight line. You, you could, if you wanted to, take, take points and measure the rise over the run, but you already know what the answer is. The answer is 7.65 percent. So let's mark here 7.65 percent and it's going to be a constant because the tangent lines like this 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 all the t all those tangent lines are parallel to each other they all have a slope of 7.65 percent beyond 117 the tangent line looks like this or like this or like this those are all horizontal lines they have no rise, and so the marginal is zero. So beyond 117, the marginal would just be would just be zero. Now let's do average. If we take an income level like this, go up, draw a line from the origin to that point, we get a line that has a slope of 7.65 percent. If we take an income level like this, go up to the function, draw a line from the origin to that point. That line has a slope of 7.65%. If we go to 117,000, draw a line from the origin to that point. That line has a slope of 7.65%. So between 0 and 117, the average is constant at 7.65%. So the average is also going to be 7.65%. I'm drawing it a little bit below here, even though it's exactly 7.65%. It's just so you can see the difference between the blue line and the orange line, but they're exactly the same. But now let's see what happens if you're above $117,000, let's say here. Well here you have a line of a slope from the origin to the function, and as you can see that's gotten flatter, but it's not anywhere close to, the slope of that line isn't anywhere close to zero. It's not as high as 7.65%, but it's, it's still fairly high. So coming down here, we have a line that's not 7.65%, but still fairly high. Come over here, draw a line from the origin to there. Well, it, we continue to fall, but it's still not close to zero. Let's say it's this. How about way over here? Well, again, we continue to, to get flatter and flatter, and so the average is going to continue to fall. But it's still not going to be zero, and if, so if you connect the dots, you can see that the average is going to, this is the average here, the average is going to fall, you remember what happened with the marginal. The marginal was constant between b below 117, and it was constant after 117 too, but after 117 it was zero. 
So what will end up happening is that the average will asymptotically approach zero as income goes to infinity, but it'll never actually get to zero. So this is an interesting example to contrast with the income tax example, because in the income tax example, as I told you, people were very, very upset, ordinary people were very upset in the 1980s that the marginal tax brackets weren't always rising. Marginal tax brackets for Social Security have never risen. They've always had this kind of structure, and yet there really doesn't seem to be any complaint, even much awareness that that that's the case. So whereas having a a marginal structure that wasn't always rising was politically not possible for income taxes, it's it's been quite possible for social security taxes, even though for lots of low income people they actually pay more in social security tax than they do in income tax. Let's see. Um, well, I think that's all I've got to say about um, about Social Security taxes. This 7.65% is what the employee pays. The employer has to pay the same amount. If you're a self-employed person, then you don't have an employer, and so you have to pay uh, more Social Security taxes than what I've shown because you have to pay the employer's part as well as the employee's part. We will have another example of average and marginals coming up.